This is the bone humerus and this is the largest bone in the upper limb. This articulates with the scapula at the glenohumeral joint and radius and ulna at the elbow joint. The proximal end of this humerus has a head, a surgical and anatomical necks and greater and lesser tubercles. The spherical head of humerus articulates with the glenoid cavity of the scapula. This anatomical neck of the humerus is formed by this groove circumscribing the head and separating it from the greater and lesser tubercles. It indicates the line of attachment of the clinohumeral joint capsule. The surgical neck of the humerus is a common site of fracture is the narrow part distal to the head and tubercles. The junction of the head and neck with the shaft of the humerus is indicated by the greater and lesser tubercles which provide attachment and leverage to some scapulohumeral muscles. This greater tubercle is at the lateral margin of the humerus whereas the, this lesser tubercle this projects anteriorly from the bone. This anterior intertubercular sulcus also known as a bicipital groove this separates the tubercles and provide protected passage for the slender tendon of the long head of the biceps muscle. The shaft of the humerus has two prominent features. This is the deltoid tuberosity, literally for the attachment of the deltoid muscle and oblique radial groove. This is the groove for the radial nerve, also known as spiral groove. This is present posteriorly in which the radial nerve and the profunda brachii artery lie as they pass anteriorly to the long head and between the medial and the lateral head of the triceps brachii muscle. The inferior end of the humeral shaft widens at the sharp medial and the lateral supra epicondylar, also known as supra condylar ridges from, form and then and distally in these these is the especially this prominent medial epicondyle and here the lateral epicondyle and these provide attachment for the muscles the distal end of the humerus this including the trochlea capitulum olecranon cornoid and the radial fossa makes up the condyle of the humerus the condyle has two articular surfaces a lateral capitulum for articulation with the head of the radius and a medial spool shaped or a pulley like trochlea for articulation with the proximal end of the ulna. Two hollows or the two fossas which occur back to back superior to the trochlea making the condyle quite thin between the epicondyles. Anteriorly the coronoid fossa receives the coronoid process of the ulna during full flexion of the elbow. Posteriorly, the olecranon fossa accommodates the olecranon of the ulna during full extension of the elbow. Superior to the capitalum, anteriorly, a shallower this radial fossa accommodates the edge of the head of the radius when the forearm is fully flexed. For its anatomical position of the humerus, it should be kept in such a way that the rounded head at the upper end faces medially, backwards and upwards. The lesser tubercle, the greater tubercle and vertical groove also known as the intertubercular groove at the upper end faces anteriorly. The Olecranon fossa on the lower flattened end faces posteriorly. And in its the clinical correlates, it's quite important to know here that the three nerves, the axillary, the radial, and the ulnar nerve, these are closely related to the humerus. As the axillary nerve around the surgical neck, the radial nerve around the radial or the spiral groove, the ulnar nerve behind the medial epicondyle. Therefore, these nerves are involved in fracture of humerus at these sites. Now, the non-union of fracture of humerus is common if a fracture occur at the junction 
of uh, its upper one third and middle one third due to poor blood supply. Median nerve is most commonly involved in the supracondylar fracture of the humerus. Now for its ossification, this have the one primary center for the shaft, three secondary centers for the upper end and four secondary center for the lower end. And you must also know here that the separate center for the medial epicondyle and its late union with the shaft may be mistaken for the fracture of medial epicondyle of the humerus. That's all about this bone humerus. Thanks for watching.